And welcome to another episode of the Hey Joe Show. I'm your host, Joe, and I regret to tell you that tonight I do not have Miss Hey Joe Show with me. Uh, Aaron is not with me tonight. Therefore, we will not be going live with the uh, the Intentional Women uh, episode. I did not feel like that was the thing for me to do uh, to launch out on my own. Uh, and deal with what it meant to be an intentional woman or intentional uh, wife or an intentional mother. Um, although some may argue that I could maybe have one of those lessons, I just do not think that that podcast would be one that would be great to do for me alone. So that being the case, I've got another show for you tonight. It is good to be with you. Thank you for those of you who are used to tuning in on Sunday nights. Last night we were just worn out. Uh, we just could not go forward and... Uh, so we had to take a break, and we appreciate your flexibility in that. Those of you who are joining us live tonight on YouTube, uh, the Hey Joe Show is a is a, a a show that comes out every Sunday night at 8:30, uh, and we do enjoy the live interaction with our audience. And so uh, usually we can get feedback on Facebook. We're going to work it where we can get feedback on YouTube. And uh, the deal is this: we want your feedback as we deal with current cultural issues as they are relevant to families walking faithfully in this in this world and of course the hey joe show is a christian podcast uh trying to come at these these very culturally relevant subjects from a biblical worldview and those who have been tuning in regular to us you know kind of what we've been doing and what we're about and so tonight our episode is going to continue on with intentionality uh but we're going to deal with what it means to be intentionally pure uh, and so this season has been all about being intentional, uh, not just taking it as it comes, but actually seeking out ways to be purposeful in our discipleship and in our Christian walk. And so that's where we're going tonight. But we always want to thank the uh, folks over at the lightnetwork.tv. That's where we belong as a, a podcast family. You can find uh, all the previous episodes of the Hey Joe Show there. You can also subscribe at your favorite podcast downloading uh, location to the Hey Joe Show, and it will be sent to you uh, directly to your device, to your phone, to your tablet, to your computer. And of course, we want to encourage you to do that because obviously the more subscriptions, uh, the more likely it is that maybe people will find the Hey Joe Show that normally don't find the Hey Joe Show. And so thank you for doing that. And of course, always pay attention to Kyle Publications on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, and check us out at kylepublications.org. That's where you'll find uh, the resources of Kyle Publications, which is what we do, which is the Hey Show Show is a part of that family as well. So uh, in, light of, in light of the concept that we've been dealing with this week, um, and this, this actually not this week, but this entire season, uh, what I would like for us to do is I would like for you and I to contemplate something as it pertains to uh, purity. And that is this, that when you and I think about purity, I'm not real sure what comes to your mind. Uh, sometimes you think about purity and it all stays in the area of sexuality. Um, and of course, purity and sexuality is a part of that, uh, but that's not all that it's... Uh, so in the totality of what purity means, uh, ultimately the concept of purity and the concept of uh, remaining unspotted from the world is a concept of there's two paths that can be chosen. Uh, and one is the pathway that it's according with, to the world. And another is a pathway that is according to uh, those who are trying to live according to the Bible. Thus, the Bible sets the pace for what it means to be pure. Um, purity is not defined by man. Sometimes uh, individuals may look at that and say, well, I'm pure, or, or, and what they mean is I am more pure than maybe other people are pure. Uh, and so comparison terms come into play. And of course, purity in that sense is not biblical either, uh, because standards of purity uh, that man sets is not our goal as Christians. 
nor is it situation that we are supposed to try to be intentionally pure according to man's circumstances and situations because man may set ideas that are in contradiction with the word of God. So when you and I think about this, it's not a matter of, well, I want to be pure uh, in the eyes of the world. I do want to be pure in the eyes of the world. However, that's not my goal. My goal is to understand what it is to be pure in the eyes of God. And so as we look at this tonight, we look about uh, talk about intentional purity. I guess I want to kind of set that pace for us as we begin to understand that the purity that we're talking about, the the unspotted, the unblemished uh, aspects of, of what we are talking about are not defined by man. Uh, neither, you know, when you really think about that, the various aspects that we are aiming for as Christians ought not be man's standards in the first place. It doesn't matter what it is. But on the subject of purity, I would offer that to you. And so when it comes to the area of purity, I would just kind of hone in, number one, on the identity that you and I have. Uh, the Bible will tell uh, us of a time when in the Old Testament there was a group of people that were walking and in, in living amongst individuals that were not living and in, in following the way that God would want them to follow. And of course, these would be the, the pagan individuals that were uh, in the land of Canaan when Moses would send the Israelites uh, into the land of Canaan, not being able to go there himself. Uh, and there's a, an identity aspect that comes into play with why they were supposed to do what they were supposed to do. And their identity behind their purity was not rooted in what did the people of the promised land, what did the Canaanites believe purity was? Purity was based upon the identity that they had as children of God. And I would offer this to you. Parents, please listen. If you teach purity to your children, but you do not teach them their identity, then do not be surprised that they miss your lesson on purity. And I would say the same thing to those of us who are ministers of the gospel, that we've got to understand that purity for the sake of purity is not a bad lesson, but I would offer this to you. Purity without the understanding of whose we are and why purity is important will fall on deaf ears, or at best, it will be a temporary restraint that does not have long-term effect. Um, that's why I will tell you this, that there's benefit in understanding identity. That's why when you go back to the book of Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 18, 19, and 20, um, it's a, a, a section of this book that deals with what does God count as holy, and within that, he establishes why they're not going to, to do the things and participate in the deeds that everybody else in the culture is doing where they're going, and also what they did where they came out of in Egypt. And so he says in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 1, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And of course, that, that definition of holy means that you've been set apart for a purpose. You've been set apart for uh, God's purpose. In other words, you aren't like everybody else, but it's not because you don't struggle uh, you know, that you, you, you no longer have sin in your life or you don't struggle at least uh, to, to delay the gratifications of the flesh. The idea is this, you've been bought with the blood of, uh, or, or you've been in that particular passage, you've been uh, entered into a covenant relationship with God. Therefore, uh, you're not going to be the same. There is going to be a difference. And in that difference, it's going to unite you in the likeness of who God is and God's nature. Therefore, because God is holy, that's why those who follow God should also be holy. And that means that when you and I think about our identity today as New Testament Christians in the subject of purity, I would offer this to you that until we get our identity straight and, and who we identify with, then we're never going to fully understand the whole concept behind the purity aspect that God has called us to. That's why I, I draw you to a, a familiar passage, those of you who know the New Testament, that in the Old Testament it would speak about the purity that was there with God's people, but in the New Testament it does the same as well, and that's where 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 comes into play, where the Bible says this, quoting an Old Testament concept, as, as Israel is redefined as the church in the New Testament, the Bible says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, 
a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Obviously, I am struggling this evening with my uh, pronunciation, and I apologize. But the whole concept behind that is this, that when you and I think about who the Old Testament people of God were, they were also called in their time to live differently, to be differently than the world around them. And the question is, why? And the answer is, because they called God their father. Now, in the New Testament, you and I are also supposed to live differently. And the question is, why? And the answer is, because we call God father. In other words, because he is our God and our identity is with him, Therefore, there's something different about us. Now, with that basis and with that understanding, I will tell you this. When you begin to understand your relation with God and you understand what holiness is and what God is when he is holy, then you begin to understand why purity even needs to be intentional and why it needs to be discussed. Now, we can go through multiple passages of Scripture. I did a quick search here on the Internet uh, in dealing with passages pertaining to purity. You have 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech and in conduct, love, faith, and purity, show yourself an example of those who believe. And of course, when you really think about the concept of what Paul was telling Timothy to do there, the idea was that when you live your life, you're going to have an opportunity to live it in a way that other people will notice. Now, Paul there with Timothy, he's dealing with a young man that was left in Ephesus to minister, and obviously he came across some difficult times uh, in dealing with that. And so Paul really is hitting on this idea of, look, even in your conduct, you need to remember that there's something that is pure, and then there's something that is impure. And he calls him to be on the side of pure. I'm, I'm looking that up for those of you who are not watching this online. I want to see what that word purity means uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. And it literally means this, pure from defilement, not contaminated. Uh, it means referring to chastity. Uh, in other words, you be chaste in your behavior. Uh, in later references, it refers to one's moral attitude towards younger sisters in Christ. That would be 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 2 and denotes being chaste, which shuts out impurity of spirit or manner that might defile. Now, looking at that, you're going, Joe, that just bores me that when you deal with concepts pertaining to purity of that depth. Well, what I want you to understand is, I guess, kind of what we're dealing with, impurity. What we're dealing with is this, that there is a standard that you accept, and that standard is not uh, moral laxity. In other words, you do not go along with the morality of the rest of the world because you're living differently because your father is different. And I would offer this to you. That doesn't just happen by accident. Uh, when you start looking at purity and you start thinking about what purity is, purity is not a byproduct of lazy uh, because lazy tends to lead us to want to indulge in the flesh and want to go after the whelms of what we would like in this world. And oftentimes throughout the scripture, that is painted in such a way that says there are going to be maybe desires of your flesh, there are going to be lust of the flesh, there's going to be the pride of life that, that will open you up to the temptations of Satan. And so for those who choose to live uh, a life of intentional purity, that means you cannot just sit on the proverbial couch and expect purity to happen. That means you've got to be proactive. You've got to seek after purity uh, in order to have purity in your life. And I would offer this to you, that when it comes to our families, that purity must be intentional as well. So we understand that the Bible talks about purity. We understand the Bible teaches us that when we uh, understand our identity, we will better understand why purity is a part of the puzzle. And all of that is because God is our Father. Therefore, you and I are different uh, that means even different impurity. So what does that look like practically? Well, this is where if Erin were here, I would throw it to her and, 
and get some comments from her or maybe some comments from uh, the Hey Joe Show live audience. So let me see what I can do on my own here. I'll pull up Facebook and see if anyone is commenting. And of course, we always welcome your comments uh, as we go live on the show. want to encourage you uh, to give us your feedback. So if you have some feedback tonight of what does it look to live life with intentional purity, I would love to hear from you and we'll try our best to get your comments uh, on the show tonight. So I'll start it off this way. And one of the things that automatically comes to my mind when I think of being intentional in purity is that it's obviously not just purity physically. I would definitely include that there. But I would say this, I would say purity of mind. Uh, it starts there. Jesus would teach on regular occasions that whatever comes out of the body, obviously it comes from the heart of man. Uh, and understanding the idea within the Bible, I do believe there is, in our understanding, no doubt a difference between the heart and the mind, but also within that concept that he was dealing with, he's dealing with the inner person. Um, the seat of the will, the seat of the desire. It would include thinking. It would include uh, emotion. It's it's in that same vein, that same venue. Uh, and so in the deal of our mind, purity of mind, I would offer this to you, that when you think about uh, remaining pure, that you've got to make sure that what goes into your head is not going to lead to impure thoughts, which will lead to impure actions. Now, that seems like a no-brainer. You know, you and I may look at that and we'd say, well, make sure then that I'm not listening to words I shouldn't listen to. Make sure I'm not uh, watching movies I shouldn't watch. Make sure uh, that I'm not talking in ways that I shouldn't talk. And all of those would be true. Um, but I also want you to think of this. Purity of mind uh, goes to every area of what you ingest. It goes to your social media. You know, when you, you look up social media, what are you ingesting on social media? Purity of mind could could be about the images that you see, but it also could be about uh, teachings. It could be about beliefs. It could be about uh, arguments uh, that people get into, and that reveals whether there's purity or not. Uh, but I would also offer this to you. If you're continually uh, within your Facebook concept or your Twitter concept or your Instagram or whatever you're dealing with, if you are constantly uh, being bombarded or being surrounded with the idea of negativity, the idea of of uh, of not necessarily cussing, but inappropriate talk regarding people, regarding circumstances, regarding things, then what you're going to do is that's going to become an element of what you think about. Um, I would offer this to you that uh, the movies that you watch, the TV shows that you watch, all of that uh, plays into this as well, uh, because if you are ingesting uh, words that you should not say, scenes that you should not act in and should not see, uh, then the idea is this, that all of that gets into your head, and what happens with that, you've heard that the mind can also be the devil's playground, well, that impurity will show itself in multiple ways. It's not just that you're going to go out and and do what you saw, you know, I know people say, well, I'm too old for that. I don't envision that. Therefore, I don't go do that. But you know, what's interesting is that in the years that I've spent in ministry, that at times the things that people see and the things that people indulge in when it comes to entertainment, those have a way of working their themselves into the marriage. Uh, and so sometimes it's not that, that that person wants to go out and do those things with other people, but maybe that that person uh, would like to uh, go there within a marriage or maybe those expectations are there. And so you set yourself up for disappointment. You set yourself up for failure. You set yourself up for hard times uh, because relationally it starts to cause a wedge. Um, you know, the reality is this, the mind is an interesting uh, instrument and that instrument can be used for great good, but it can also be used for great bad and great evil. That's why there really is an element in the book of Proverbs where you better guard your heart uh, because the Bible says, for from it flow the springs of life. And that, that, that really is true when you start getting to the core of what the heart would mean. That means your, your, your inner being, who you are, uh, that you better guard because whatever goes into there will pour forth out. 
And so that's why purity, I believe, starts with the mind. It starts. It, it entails the music that we listen to. It entails the social media behavior that we have. It entails the internet behavior that we have. It entails the movies that we watch. It entails um, the books that we read, the magazines that we read. You, you look at that and say, well, Joe, why does that matter? Because it all begins with the mind. And I appreciate that. And uh, an individual commented, Mark commented on our Facebook site that said, purity begins with understanding our identity. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified, nevermore do I live but Christ in me. And he's absolutely right, which is what I went back to in the book of Leviticus with God telling the children of Israel that they were going to be holy, and the very reason that he gave was because the Lord God is holy. Uh, that's why they were going to be holy, because their identity was locked with God. Uh, and he's absolutely right in that. I, I would offer this to you as well. Purity uh, can also happen spiritually, and we need to pay attention to that and make sure within our homes uh, that that is the case as well. Now, I do want to say this. Uh, when it comes to purity spiritually, uh, I do mean that obviously God's standard is our standard, uh, that there's no confusion on whose standard is directing the ship. Uh it's not a matter of, well, are we going to use man's logic? Or are we going to use the Bible? Obviously, purity, when it comes to spirituality, means that we do not entertain teaching that is not in accordance with the will of God. We do not entertain teaching that does not find its root in the Scriptures. And that's not because, you know, I'm so close that I don't want to listen to everybody. That's not what this is. Um, sometimes you can be so open that you, you, you don't let the Scriptures reign supreme. Uh, and then sometimes you can be so closed that you don't care if anybody else really has uh, anything to say on that particular text because you've only reached the conclusions you've reached, therefore everybody else is done. And you really then maybe shortchange yourself that somebody else has something to teach you. And so I want to remain balanced in that. Uh, but when I say purity when it comes to spirituality, there is no question whether or not the word of God is the established truth. John chapter 17 and verse 17, Jesus would say, sanctify them in truth. Thy word or your word is truth. Jesus would say in John chapter 8 that if we abide in the truth, that we'll be truly his disciples. And that's how freedom occurs when we abide in the truth of God's word. So I guess when I say purity spiritually, what I mean is this. Let God's word reign supreme in your individual life, but also within your family. Now, why would that need to be discussed when it comes to intentionality? I would offer this to you because in our culture today, with so much mixture in the, uh, in the area of what our society calls Christianity, there are conclusions that have been reached on every side of the spectrum, and individuals that you may respect in some areas uh, will say certain things that even though they may be right in some areas, it may not be in accordance with the will of God in every area. And that's where you and I have to be like the Bereans. Purity, spirituality, and spiritual matters means this, that even if that individual is well-respected by me, I may listen and I may consider, but ultimately I am intentionally pure in the direction that I go spiritually, and that means that God's Word is the final say in all matters pertaining to such. And that means I have to have effort. I actually have to put forth effort to... Uh, number one, know why I believe what I believe, know why it's worth believing, and then know it well enough that when things are being talked about, subject matters are being discussed, maybe relationally, maybe occupationally, maybe in parenting, maybe around school, maybe in the locker room, that it's not that I have to uh, maybe go ask the experts, although I will say again, you can learn, I can learn from other people, but the deal is, have you spent the time uh, to be able to say you're being intentional about your purity in spiritual matters. So those are the two areas tonight that I think about in purity. Obviously, the body, physically, that goes into it, but that's not all. Uh, I believe if you get your identity right, number one, and you get your purity of mind right, and you get your purity in spiritual matters right, then that will have tremendous impact in other areas of your life. Um Th those are some key fundamental areas. And so I don't know what your thoughts are from that one. Uh, obviously, you know, 
I would love to hear from you. And some of you, uh, obviously, who are listening, you may not feel comfortable or may not see the need to to comment on it. And, of course, being on a new night, sometimes it is difficult at times to get others to comment. But those who have came in, who come in and commented, you understand that um, purity is not something that's just going to happen by accident. I guess that's one of the things I want to drive home. Uh, you and I must be intentional about that, just like we must be intentional about our discipleship. We must be intentional uh, when it comes to the subject of being good fathers, being good husbands, being good wives, being good mothers, uh, being teenagers who are walking different than the world. Uh, none of that happens just because we we woke up. Uh, there really is a conscious decision of denying of self. Uh, a conscious of decision of taking up our cross and a conscious decision of following after Jesus Christ. And in such, that means in every area, in every day, and in every time, and in every circumstance, I must be intentional. I must be purposed about it. So what can we do to be purposed about purity? Understanding what it is, what can we do about it? Well, I would say this. Number one, uh, you don't have to have a filter in order to filter. I will offer that to you. Uh, you can choose to turn the channel. You can choose to do your research ahead of time. I highly encourage you to do such. Before you go see a movie, look it up on Plugged In or Screen It. Uh, those are two websites of PluggedIn.com or ScreenIt.com. You will find on there uh, descriptions of the spiritual nature, of the sexuality, of the language. And being intentional means this. You don't wait until you get to the theater and go, oh, wow, that was a surprise. What you do is before you ever go, you look it up. But I will say this as well, that you won't be able to necessarily see everything because not everything will be picked up. So there will be times that you need to be brave enough to turn the channel and say we don't need to see that. But I will say this, while, while having a filter is not necessary for you to filter on your own, it is important for you to have filters, especially when it comes to the Internet. If you do not have one of those, I highly recommend Covenant Eyes. Uh, that will help you to be intentional about your purity. Uh, is it a fix-all? Is it? Does it mean you can let your guard down? As I've heard some individuals argue that sometimes parents will put filters on their computers and they'll just let their guard down. No, don't let your guard down. Continue to be intentional even though you have a filter because your goal is purity. And, uh, and there are individuals who know ways around filters. Even some good teenagers know ways around good filters. And teenagers, I hope and pray that that's not who you are tonight, that you do not live that double standard life telling your parents or making your parents believe one thing while all the while you're doing something else. Nor do I hope that any men in particular are doing that. Uh, don't cheat your family in that way. Uh, I, I will say this as well. When you start considering the idea of practicality, you can change the channel. You don't have to listen to it. Have a filter. But I will say this as well. If you're not intentionally growing uh, in your walk with the Lord, then you're opening yourself up to uh, falling uh, as a casualty, as a victim, to impurity. Um, because it's going to get easier for you to compromise. Compromising is a, is a serious subject when it comes to purity because people can be pure in some areas of their life, but then they will compromise in other areas of their life. And what I'm telling you and what I'm suggesting to you and encouraging you is this. Purity is not a sometimes thing. Purity is actually an all-the-time thing where it becomes what you seek after. Therefore, it becomes who you are. Is it possible for you to be pure in mind and pure in heart? Yes, it is. But that is not because you relax. I would even say this to you, that the scripture that teaches that if we will draw closer to God, that, that the devil will flee from us because the, the God, God will draw closer to us as well. The idea behind that is the closer you get to God, the further you get away from Satan. And I would propose in this area of dealing with purity, being intentional in that, that you have got to seek to draw closer to God, both in your study habits, both in your prayer life, but I would also offer this to you, both in the fellowship with Christians who are uh, members of the New Testament church. All of those are crucial to you growing closer to God. And if you grow clo closer to God, then you will grow further from Satan. If you grow further from Satan, then you will begin to understand that purity can actually become a way of life, not just uh, a categorized decision every now and then. That's not the intent. The intent is 
that we become pure in life. And what I want you to hear tonight is this. That does not happen by accident. You and I must be intentional in those ways. That's what I have tonight. Some of the comments that have come in on Facebook are are good to hear from individuals that we haven't heard from in a while. I saw that Lori said hi, and I saw that Miss Kathy said hi. I believe it was, unless it was Mike. And so I'll give a shout out to you guys. Thank you, Jay Zerp, for for always being in, and Jonathan Exum. Thank you so much for uh, being regulars to the show. Uh, I will say this: we're exper- experimenting on YouTube. So if you switched over to YouTube and you started watching it, and all of a sudden you realized, wait a second. That does not look like a video show. It's because I recognized that we lost our video feed, and I don't know why we did, uh, but as we experiment with this, we will get better at that. Uh, So those of you who prefer to watch on YouTube or go to our YouTube channel, uh, you'll be able to do that as well. So that's all I have for the show tonight. Aaron always tells me that sometimes I have a trouble trouble being quiet. So I'm going to try not to be uh, have trouble in that way tonight. And I'm going to go ahead and thank you for tuning in. Thank the guys and girls over at the Light Network dot tv for allowing the hey joe show to be on their their platform of podcast check them out over there visit us online at kylepublications.org check us out on instagram and on twitter and on facebook for all of the current news pertaining to kyle publication which is the the family i guess the overarching company that the hey joe show operates within we would love to see if we can do anything to help you as you strive to walk pure lives in this world that's all that i have so i'm going to try not to keep going so i am out please hang up and try again